What any of us need when we're in trouble, if you think about it, when we're upset or we're angry, we like people to acknowledge what's going on for us. We like people to actually look us in the eye and say, God, I can see why you're upset. It's not trying to fix it or mend it, it's just looking at what's happened and saying, God, that's really hard for you, isn't it? I can't imagine what that's like for you. Do you know what? I'm here. If there's anything you can think of, I'm going to help you with it if I can. So you would imagine then that this next task would be the simple task, in a sense, because you would just be the best person you could be to the person that you love who's in this penultimate moment of their life. Why is it that that time can be probably the most complex time of all? Because my anxiety comes from a place of I might say the wrong thing, I might make it worse. If we talk about this, you might actually die. Um, you might give up, you might turn and face the wall, and I might take away whatever shred of hope you have. Um, you'll get upset, uh, you'll get further depressed. I might get into trouble with the rest of the family because I've actually spoken about this. So there's a lot of difficult things. The unfortunate piece about all of this is that you're dying can actually be more about me than about you. And that sounds really strange. Does that mean I'm a bad person? No, it doesn't mean I'm a bad person. I'm going from a place that my desire is to mind you and make you feel better. But isn't it funny, the things that I do to try and make you feel better are actually the things that close you down and isolate you even more. But maybe if I let you lean into your pain and tell me what it's like to feel your pain. And if I could just sit there and hold that, and even say simple things like, I can't imagine what that's like for you. I'm so sorry that you're feeling that way today, or I'm sorry this happened to you, I'm sorry this happened to us. You know, I don't know what to say to you. It's all about, I suppose, just being able to respond to the person in their moment. Um, staying with them, not be trying to think about what you're going to say next, because I think that's what people do. They go into this panic in their heads and say, oh my God, where's this conversation going? I don't know the answer to this. How am I going to answer this? He's going to start getting upset now. What am I going to do when this happens? You know, so do you see how it's beginning to come all about me? And when I've started having that conversation in my head, what I've actually stopped doing is listening to you. So therefore I come out then with the thing, oh, please don't talk like that, you know, there's lots of, people, lots of things we can do and we close it down and close it down. And ironically, the one thing that we want to avoid is what we cause. And uh, what we want to avoid is that the person will feel isolated and alone. But in fact, we create that space where that's actually what happens. The tragedy of that is that the time passes and the big things are left unsaid and people end up with regret. And a lot of the time people will say, I thought we had more time, but the person has died and it's too late.